No more chains, no more bondage. I am free. Yes. Come on and sing it out. Oh. No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. Praise it like we kind of tired. And you know, it's fresh first thing in the morning. And you know, we ain't did nothing. <laughs> Come on. Keep going. But the Lord gave me something. We were going to sing a whole different set of songs. But the Lord spoke to me in my dream last night. And this may be for some. Keep going. This may be for some of you guys. And I know it just wasn't for me. But there was in my dream, there was a sale. And I was in the sale. And it was other people in the sale. And I said, Lord, I got to go to church. I'm on my way. I'm going to be late if I stay in here. So I said, okay. I said, Lord, I got to get out of here. So I'm sitting there in the sale. And as I'm sitting there, the bailiff or the corrections officer, he came and unlocked the door. And I said, oh, okay, I'm, I'm getting out. But I stayed in. And the Lord began to speak to me. And I said, oh, wow, why did I stay in? And he said, because some of us are so used to being in that place where we've been. In that bondage that we've been in. In those shackles, in those chains, and in that place of bondage for so long that we become so accustomed to being bound. But the Lord said, I came to set you free. And not only did he come to set you free, but then in my dream, he sent the pastors by. He said, Dr. Sandra and Dr. Gay by. And I said, Pop, I got to get out of here. He said, come on, I'm going to give you a key. I got excited about that. He said, I'm going to give you a way out. He said, I'm going to show you how to get out. And you know what he did? He stuck his finger in the lock. And he stuck his finger in the lock, and then a spring came out. He said, that's how you get out. I said, okay. And then he put it back in because he didn't want everybody to get the key to get out. He wanted to, of course, want to get everybody. But if you're supposed to be in there, you're supposed to be in there. I mean, that's just the system. But anyway, he stuck his finger in there. And he said, this is the way that you get out. So for some of you, the Lord says that he's given you keys this morning. He's given you pastors that have the keys to get you out of your situation, to get you out of your issues, to make your business grow. He's given you keys. And for some of you, you just been in there so long, the door already been open, so you just need to walk out. Come on and rejoice in the Lord for your freedom this morning. Hey! Hallelujah!
No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. You got to sing it for yourself. Come on, you got to sing it for yourself. No more. I'm free to love. I'm free to experience the love of God this morning. Hey, no more. No more. No No more chains. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm free. Hallelujah. I'm free. Hallelujah. I'm no longer the property of the enemy. Yeah. I'm not the property Hallelujah. of the system, yeah. of the world system. I'm free. free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I can walk out my victory this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know if y'all got that thing if it didn't sink in. Yeah. But you can walk out your victory this morning. Yeah. I don't care what the enemy has been telling you. You can walk out your victory this morning. Yeah. Hallelujah. Any triumphant people in the house? Hallelujah. Anybody got the victory? Yeah. Anybody got the victory? Anybody got the victory? Anybody got the victory? Anybody got the victory? Hallelujah! Come on and celebrate! Celebrate your victory this morning! Your giants are coming down! Your giants are coming down! stand against that great name? Who can stand against him when you call on the name of Jesus? When you declare and decree the word, who can stand against that word? Heaven and earth will pass away before that word fail. Stand on the word of God this morning. Walk out your victory. Yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Walk out your freedom. Walk out your victory. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Who 
Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. The Holy Spirit said that the wall of Jericho came down when they began to walk and they began to shout. They began yeah. to say something. And some of you haven't said anything yet. And you don't feel that sense of freedom. But there's a walking, there's a doing, there's an action that has to take place in order for you to receive this morning. So during the service, I don't care when it is, as long as y'all ain't out of order, do everything decent and in order. But when the Holy Spirit prompts you, you need to walk it out. Walk it out. Walk it out. And begin to give God the glory for your victory this morning. Hallelujah. Walk it out this morning. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. Come on and lift up those hands before the Lord. In humble submission and surrender to a mighty God, to a holy God. Hallelujah. He wants to set you free this morning. Hallelujah. He doesn't just, he won't force his will on you, but if you choose this morning to allow him to come in, he's going to set you free. Hallelujah. That thing that's been weighing on your mind, that situation, he's coming in to set you free this morning. If you allow him to. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. We're no longer bound by sin. We're no longer bound by shame. No longer bound by guilt. We're not bound by condemnation. God, so we receive your love this morning. Hallelujah, because you gave your first love. You gave us Jesus. And he died. He bled and died and was and was buried and resurrected that I could receive your love freely. And we thank you for that this morning, God. Thank you for giving the best gift that every man or woman or anybody could ever give. You gave us Jesus. And not only did you give us Jesus, When Jesus went back to heaven, you sent the comforter. You gave us the Holy Spirit that gave us power over the enemy. Hallelujah. And we thank you this morning. We praise you. I've been captured by a love I can't explain. Now you have me. And I'm forever changed. I've abandoned everything I've ever known. I surrender. My life is not my own. I belong to you. I belong.
captured. I've been captured by a love I can't explain. Now you have me. Now you have me. And I'm forever changed. I've abandoned. I've abandoned everything I've ever known.
Let's lift our hands into his presence. My life, my life is not my own. Mm -hmm. To you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. One more time, my life, my life is not my own. To you. I give myself, I give myself to you. I belong, I belong to you. Let's declare that. I belong to you. I belong. Stay right there. Now listen. Some of you have some needs right now. Whatever your needs might be, we want to pray with you. We want to agree with you. Those of you that are watching through by the way of the internet, we want to pray with you too. Aren't you glad that whatever concerns us, it's concerned the Father too? And we're here to touch and agree. We thank God that he has given the Holy Spirit to aid and assist us while we're here. So those of you that have prayer needs, whatever you're going through with right now, we want you to come, and we're going to pray in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Also, we have our prayer wall, a replica of the prayer wall, and we have many souls that has been put on that wall that we may pray and believe the Lord for them to be saved. The testimonies are coming in that those that we place on the wall, that the Lord has touched their life, and now they are a new creature in Christ Jesus. Could we have some intercessors to go to that well and wall and let us pray fervently? Hallelujah. going to have Dr. Sandra. She's going to pray. Father, we just bless you this morning. We thank you, Father, for another opportunity to come before you in prayer. We thank you for the access we have been given through the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, we declare and decree the victory of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, over every area, every need, Lord, that's being brought before you today. We thank you that you're able to exchange those ashes for your beauty, Lord. You're able, Father, to make the crooked places straight, Lord. You're able, Father God, Lord, to turn the situation and circumstances around to give you glory. And Father, we pray for those that are unsaved, Lord. We pray for those that are backslidden. We pray, Father, for those, Lord, that have been caught in the snare of addiction, those that have been caught in elixir relationship, those that have been confused mentally. We declare, Father God, Lord, that your kingdom is going to be done here on earth as it is in heaven, Lord. We declare that heaven is going to come to their situation, Lord. For your word says, Father God, Lord, that, Lord, as your kingdom come, your will will be done on earth, Lord. Let it be done in the lives of those, Father God, Lord, that are unsafe. Let it be done in the lives of those, Lord, that are in pain, Lord. Let it be done in the lives of those that may have gotten a negative diagnosis, Lord. We thank you that you have the word, the last word today. And we belong to you, Lord, and you take care of your own. So, Lord, right now, 
We thank you, Father God, Lord, that every need is met, Lord. We thank you for the souls that are being saved and delivered even right now. We thank you that the backslidden is coming home, Lord. We thank you, Father God, Lord, that every need, Father God, Lord, that we, as we subject it to the Lord, of Lordship of our Savior, Jesus Christ, Lord, that they will experience your victory, Lord. They will experience freedom. They will experience deliverance. They will experience healing. In the glorious name of Jesus, we declare and decree it in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. Stay right there. Bring the camera over here, please. Those of you that are watching through, by the way, of internet, we also have an icon on there that if you have a prayer request, Email that prayer request to us, and we will place it in our box. And if you have someone that you know that need to be saved, place it. In other words, email that to us, and we will make sure that they will be on this wall right here, which we call the Welling Wall or the Prayer Wall. It's a replica of the one that is in Jerusalem. And our intercessors, they are praying right now for souls to be saved. There's a mother. There's a father. There's a son. There's a daughter. There are kin folks, there are employees and employers and companies on this wall that we believe in the Lord for them to be saved. Amen. We are called, amen, to evangelize, amen, to see souls saved. Amen. Hallelujah. I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. Oh, 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 oh. My life is not my own. Oh, 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 oh. To you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. Ooh, I belong. Now come on and put those hands real good for the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's bless him. Let's reverence him. Amen. It is he who we want. Come on, let's magnify him. Let's enlarge him right where we are. Right where you stand, exalt and bless his holy name. Hallelujah, for he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh. Hallelujah. 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 We bless you, Lord. I belong to you. to the Lord with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Can we just lift our hands in his presence one more time? The Holy Spirit will never invade you, but if you welcome him, he will come. He is able to do for you what you can't do for yourself. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. This is why we take time to praise him and worship, because the Word of God said he inhabited the praises of his people. And when we worship and when we begin to praise him, it creates an atmosphere. 
that is conducive for God to show up in the midst. And when he show up, glory be to God, he's not just showing up to give you chill bumps only, amen, but you can have an encounter with him. Hallelujah. This thing is personal. Somebody say it's personal. I know we all here today, amen, to make one voice to be heard on high, but this is a personal time, amen, that I'm able to be restored, refreshed, and renewed, hallelujah, by his presence, because in his presence is the fullness of joy. Hallelujah. It is the presence of the Lord that draws us out of ourselves unto him. And it's nothing like stepping out of your world and then stepping to God's world. Amen. Isn't that right? Praise God. Come on, let's give him another shout of praise. Yeah. Once you go to about two or three people and greet them and welcome them in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Those of you that want it through by the way of the internet, amen. We welcome you to worship with us. Amen. As we bless the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that he in turn will bring honor and glory to the Father. Amen. You are tuning to Acts Ministries, Inc. at 3150 Dundee Road here in Winter Haven, Florida. Glory be to the Lamb of God. This is a wonderful time. The atmosphere is already set. People's hearts has been touched. Amen. So that the Spirit of the Lord can continue to move in liberty. Amen. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Worthy is the Lamb. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, worshipers. Thank you, musicians. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We're getting ready to lift up our offering. Those of you that are online, you can, um, there is a icon that you can press on to give your type and your offering. We share with you, and we are, uh, and we're so honored to share so, is that if you belong to another place of worship, your type go to your place of worship. Amen. But if you want to give an offering, so a see, please feel free, and we welcome it. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Let's get excited. We're going to give unto the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Everyone that can, can you please stand on your feet? And we're going to continue to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I do have a couple of scriptures that I want to read. It's uh, John 6, 11 to 12. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples, and the disciples to those sitting down, and likewise of the fish as much as they wanted. So when they were filled, he said to the disciples, gather up the fragments that remain so that nothing is lost. Hallelujah. Philippians 4, 19 said, and my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Our Lord supplies everything that we need and everything that we want. He is our supplier. He is our provider. 
Who wouldn't serve a God like that? Hallelujah. And those that can, can you please stand? And we're going to get our tithes and our offering in our hand. And we're going to do our confession. We're on week 46. Hallelujah. Ready, began. And as I was given today's offering, I believe in the supernatural power of God to multiply what I give to meet the needs in my church and in my life. I give with a spirit of expectation and faith. This is my kingdom investment, and I believe the bank of heaven and all its resources will be released. Hallelujah. And we're going to now turn it into the hands of our ushers. Glory be to God. Is every heart satisfied in what they've given? Now we're going to point our hands to the barrel. Thank you, Amen. Hallelujah. How many know that the Lord is real? Amen. Glory be to God. We are so excited about worshiping and praising the Lord because he's so worthy to be praised. Amen. I'm so glad that uh, the Lord saved me. And I bless the Lord that uh, he drawn me through by his loving kindness. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, so uh, as we stand before you this morning, we want to thank God for this opportunity, amen, to share what we uh, believe is the word of the Lord. And uh, we've been talking uh, on the series about Christian maturity. And uh, uh, Lord willing, uh, we, we may get through with it today, but if we don't, uh, we will go at it again. But we're going to center this message also around our candidates uh, our elder elects who we're going to set in as officers of, uh, of elders today. 
and, um, uh, and we believe that you're going to be blessed. Listen very carefully because of um, um, discipleship is so important. Somebody say discipleship is so important. And this is why we need to be disciples. It's, it's not enough just to, just to get saved, amen, but we need to be disciples. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you. Lord, we are empty without the presence of your spirit. And Lord God, as we stand before your people, Lord God, we thank you that you, the Holy Spirit, will have preeminence and that you will speak those things in the ears of your people that they will hear what the kingdom of the Lord has to say. Father, we thank you, and as we take this time, Father, Lord, to ask you to anoint the hearers right now in Christ Jesus' name, and Father, Lord, and their hearts that they may receive what the Spirit of the Lord is saying, and we reverence you, Father God, and we give you praise and glory in Christ Jesus' name, and everybody says, Amen. Amen. We also thank God, our Father, for the person of the Holy Spirit who is here to aid and assist us while we're here in this earth realm, and, and most Definitely the Lord Jesus Christ, because without his shed blood, there would be no remissions of sin. Isn't that right? And I thank God for Christ Jesus being obedient even unto death to please his father so that we as human beings, as jacked up as we may be, amen, we can have rights to the tree of life. I'm excited about that. And since Jesus Christ had suffered, dead, uh, suffered, bled, and died and risen, and now he's uh, on the right hand of the Father. The Word of God tells us that he's yet making intercession for us. That's just how much he, ha he loved us, and he's yet making intercession. And in that, uh, when Christ died, he set up the government of the New Testament church. Christ is the only one that we know, Christ Jesus. He divided himself in five, dis five different dimensions. The apostle, the prophet, evangelist, pastors, and teachers. We have some going around today calling themselves chief prophets. And I, I, I say unto you that there's only one chief prophet, amen, according to the New Testament. Can you say amen to that? Amen, praise God. So, so Jesus divided himself. He divided himself in five different dimensions. Amen. The word of God called him and he gave gift unto the body of Christ. Amen. And these are the governmental statuses or the government officials that he used to help govern in this earth realm. Amen. In reference to the kingdom of God. And anyone that holds that office, they must know something about the operations of the kingdom of God. They must know how God thinks. Come on now. Yeah. They must have a view, amen, to understand how to appropriate the kingdom of God in this earth. Yeah. Amen. We have some, they have titles, but they have no character. Some people have been promoted. Yeah. Do you hear me what I'm saying? Yeah. Because of their gifts. Yeah. Amen. But give me someone who has been discipled. They have developed the character of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Give me those people and I can show you something. But too many people has been promoted because of their gift. You can have gifts. And if you have not become kingdom domesticated, amen, you can cause problem. You'll be part of the problem and not part of the solution. Amen. I have witnessed in my time of 36 years of ministries. I've seen them come and go. And years ago, I was part of that flock because of the gift. Amen. I thought that maybe they was trying to bind me. They're trying to keep me. Well, I hear from God just like you do. Maybe you do. But can we be on the same page? Amen. Can you, can you submit your gift, amen, to the house of God as unto the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. And a preacher shared with me years and years ago. So you might be gifted and you think you can have your way in this house. Why don't you go and start your own church and draw all those crazy folks and let's see how long you're going to be pastoring. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Gifts come a dime a dozen. Do you hear me what I'm saying? And I won't touch it because I can, praise God. But anytime you promote people because of their gift and they have not character, and that is to say, they have not become kingdom domesticated. Amen. You're going to have problems on your hand. It's just like it's just like when we have our children. When a child is born, that child needs to be taught. Isn't that right? And if you don't if you don't teach that child, something else will. Do you hear me? What I'm saying? Amen. In today's society, we see such a high percentage of it. You can tell that the parents are not doing their job, and when they're not doing their job, somebody else is teaching their kid. 
Amen. The streets are key, uh, teaching their kid. Come on now. This, 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 this stuff that they got going on now, uh, 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 I won't go there, praise the Lord. But, 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 but other, something else have, have, have stepped to the plate and say, I will teach your kid. And whatever, whatever that greater influence is, that's what's going to impact the life of that child. Can you say amen to that? Amen. As much as I wanted to run the streets, glory be to God, uh, our parents, they had standards. And if we buck against that standards, what some call anarchy, trying to bring in or trying to usher in a different type government, my mother and my father, they had no problem, amen, spanking the bottom. You know what I really want to say. Praise God. But nowadays, they don't want to discipline folks because they have allowed the law to step in and say, if you spank them, you're going to jail. Yeah. Dial 911 on me. Matter of fact, I'm going to spank that behind, and I'll dial 911 on myself. Yeah. Amen. Because at the end, you're going to be glad I spanked that behind than somebody spanked that behind with a bullet. Or you wind up in jail somewhere. You wind up in prison, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People don't want to hear that type of preaching anymore. They don't want to hear that type of teaching. Hallelujah. They're saying that now it's un unethical. Well, that's what's wrong with the body. This, that's what's wrong with America today. Amen. We don't, have, we don't have kingdom structures like we used to. But that's not the message. Praise the Lord. The meter was running. We won't charge you for that. <laughs> Amen. Uh, but, um, but we have two candidates uh, that we're going to set in as elders. And uh, the elders is one that has proven himself. They have been set aside, and they understand the kingdom order. Um, they will be using presbyteries uh, in, in time to come. And the word presbytery simply means the order of the elders. What does the order of the elders mean? It means that they have had time to consider in terms of they have been praying and fasting, seeking the face of the Lord and say of a surety, this person now is ready to become part of a dimension of God's kingdom as far as the government is concerned or, or to help set up the, the foundation of any local ministry. And, uh, and, 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 and when you go through those processes, I'm not saying the ministry won't have trouble from time to time, but you'll find that you will have less trouble, less trouble. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And uh, uh, these two uh, candidates, uh, they have met the 10 M requirements, manhood or womanhood, ministry, message, mature, marriage, methods, manners, money, morals and motives we call them the 10 m's and uh, this is something that bishop bill hammond the spirit of the lord had given him years ago and he's a renowned uh, apostle but in the, at the time he was a prophet he yet a prophet but he's an apostle and uh, uh, when when we set up the government of uh, any local body talking about the place of worship if there is guidelines, if you set guidelines, amen, and everyone govern themselves by the guidelines, you will find an organization or you will find a ministry flowing more smoothly. And if problems, if problems do occur, we will know how to address them and how to assist them so that at the same time the fruit of the Lord can be made, uh, uh, other words, can be found in it. Amen. Too many times, uh, you know, ministry... Our churches is just like a marriage. Uh, Sometimes marriages have their struggles. Isn't that right? Amen. Amen. Ministry will have its struggle, but but if someone is mature, if you have someone that you are accountable to, amen, they can help work some things out so that the glory of the Lord can be made manifest in it. God always, he's always looking for fruit. Jesus went about, and, and if you read from Math Matthew's Mark Luke, you find that he had given the illustration concerning about the fig tree. God always is looking for fruit. Jesus is looking for fruit. Yeah. 
So even in the midst of conflict, can he find fruit? Okay, did the governmental body handle that situation right so that it can bring honor and glory to the Father? Do you hear me what I'm saying? And so this is so important. And when you find a ministry that has, uh, that has structure, that has kingdom structures, amen, you will, you will also experience more of a move of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm not talking about this movie star stuff, all the excitement and one thing to this. I'm talking about a real authentic move of God. Because the word of God tells us that in the presence of him, amen, is the fullness of joy. Amen. We're not here trying to uh, get a Nobel Prize, praise God. But what we're wanting to do, uh, those of us who are elders, uh, who, who have become ordained, it is, our, it is our responsibility, amen, to help recalibrate an atmosphere. Whether we do it here in worship or if opportunity come your way that you have to minister to a person uh, one-on-one individually uh, there should be enough God in you there should be enough teaching and training in you you should be able to get hold to the horns of the altar amen to help create an atmosphere amen to help reset that person if they will listen and this will only take place through by the anointing of God the Holy Spirit he himself, he, he, he is a paraclete being translated. He is a helper. Yes. So we should have, we should have some, some type of relationship with God through Christ Jesus that the Holy Spirit, amen, will move in us and then through us. Yes. Amen. Yes. Every now and then we need a drink of water. Yes. Do you hear me what I'm saying? Yes. Every now and then we need bread. And there's time that God will take the leadership of a ministry and he will break them like bread and he will pour them out like wine in the life of somebody. Leaders, elders, there's time that God will allow you to become an oasis in the midst of somebody's desert. Hallelujah. And this is so important for us to understand this. Amen. We don't want to lean towards our own ideology. Isn't that right? Praise God. But what we want to lean towards is what Jesus Christ have already set before us. Praise God. How he have set up his church. And amen. And if we keep the main thing, the main thing, it's going to keep a lot of foolishness out. If we keep the main thing, the main thing, people, they're going to experience the Holy Spirit more than they will experience man. This is not a talent show. Amen. This is not to see who can dance the best. Oh, yes, amen. If the Holy Spirit move upon you and you dance, dance. Holy Spirit move upon your heart to run around the building, run. Holy Spirit move upon you to shout, shout. Whatever it is, whatever, and whatever you do, let it be real. Hey, let it be real. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I'm so excited about it. And, uh, so um, as we have shared with you uh, concerning about the three dimensions of Christian maturity, uh, we have established with you uh, the first three dimensions is disciple. And the second one is dimensions of faith. And the other dimensions is dimensions of manifestation. And we have already established, amen, concerning uh, the first entry level concerning about a disciple. Briefly. The first entry level of disciple is a learning student that follows who is basically, we call it Psalm 23. An entry level disciple is just like a baby. The baby has to be taught. The baby has not developed teeth yet. The baby has to be, uh, the, the um, character has to be developed within that child. And we say the second uh, entry level of disciple is steward. A steward is basically one who is trustworthy. Somebody say trustworthy. Trustworthy, and that word trustworthy sim simply means uh, 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 to have faith in, believe, rely on, depend on, have confidence in, bank on, and be assured about. And everybody in here would love to have someone that you can depend on. on. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So that's the second entry uh, level. And we have given... Uh, many examples concerning about that, but we're going to move on um, 
And the third uh, level entry is royal priesthood. Somebody say royal priesthood. Royal priesthood. Royal priesthood. And uh, royal priesthood is being translated uh, in, uh, as a king priest. Say king priest. King priest, uh, if you look at Genesis, the 14th chapter, and beginning at verse 18. Notice what it says. When you find it, say amen. It's on the screen for, for those of us. Let's read it together. Ready? Read. And Melchizedek. Hold it right there. And King and Melchizedek, uh, and, I'm sorry, and uh, Melchizedek, Melchizedek, he's what? He, he is king, right? Yes. And it said that how he had brought forth wine, and come on, read it, read, and he was. So you see, not only was he king, but he was also what? Priest. Do you see that? Yes. So he was king priest. Somebody say king priest. Go to Revelations 1, 6. When you find it, say amen. Let's read it together. Ready? Read. And has made us and his father, and to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Praise God. So we see in Revelations 1, 6, it says, he made us what? King and priest. Unto who? God. Unto who? God. Amen. He made us what? King and priest. I want you to get this in your spirit. He made us king and priest. Look at somebody say, you are a king and a priest. King and priest, this is so important. And I believe a lot of times, and I, I won't talk about you, but I'll talk about myself uh, in my earlier years. I made a lot of mistakes because I didn't know who I was, and then I was trying to prove to folks that I was a Christian. You don't have to prove to nobody. All you have to do is just live the life. I didn't say live a lie, but live the life. I'm messing up real good right about now. All you have to do is just live the life. Jesus said you will know the tree by the fruit it. Amen. So we are king priests. And uh, so uh, we understand uh, that king priests, they have authority or priests have authority in heaven. And a priest, and I'm sorry, priests have authority in heaven, and king have authority here in earth. So we we carry a dual role, and and I thank God for it because in my prayer time, that's when I am a priest. Yeah. And those of us who have read the Bible, we do understand the word of God says that how Jesus, amen, he went away into the mountain and he prayed. He prayed, why? And a lot of times he prayed at night. He prayed at night so that he can get instructions, get instructions from the Father, and once he got those instructions, then when daybreak came, he was able to operate like a king. A king decrees and declares what heaven has sanctioned. If you have, in other words, if you don't hear anything, stop decreeing and declaring something that heaven have not sanctioned. This is how we get in trouble. Well, it, it seems like it's just the right thing to do. Well, have you just, you know, the doctor have shared with you the certain things that you shouldn't eat? Well, you know, I was so hungry, I just ate it. It probably was good, good to you, but it's just not good for you. So what, what are you saying is that we shouldn't just be declaring and decreeing things because it seems like it's right. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm born again, and the scripture says, yes, the scripture says a lot of things. 
But the timing of the scripture, the season of the scripture, or the season that you're in, can God trust you enough to give you keys to that scripture, which is revelation? The revelation comes from above, and once you receive it, you can execute it here in this earth realm. I think I'm going to give the Lord a praise off and death for that by myself. Now let's go to uh, 1 Peter 2 and 9. 1 Peter 2 and 9. When you find it, say amen. 1 Peter 2 and 9. It's on the screen. Let's read it together. Ready? Read. But ye are a chosen, a royal, and holy, a peculiar, that Wow, wow. He have called us out of what? Into his marvelous light. So when he called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Now, now, now I can't speak for nobody else. Before the Lord saved me, I was a mess. I was a, 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 almost like a PK. Uh, my grandfather was a pastor, so you, you, you know... <laughs> Uh, grandfather's the pastor, just certain things you can get away with. With folks, not in front of him. Oh, yeah, that's the, that's the pastor grandson, so you get special privilege. And I found out that down through the years, special privileges can get you in trouble because it may work with them, but it don't have anything to do with your relationship with God. You can give the Lord a praise offering for that. Oh, yes, amen. So, so, um, so now, when he called us out of darkness into his marvelous light, going back to myself, I was a mess. So thank God, uh, the place of worship where I met the Lord at, where he saved me, amen, they had Sunday school. That was a type of discipleship class. They had BYU. That was a type of discipleship class. And so you're able to become trained and, and know the things of God. Amen. Character is being built in you. And I have to tell you of a surety, uh, in, in, in some parts in God's hand, I was like soft clay. Amen. But there was other part of the clay had gotten hard and the Lord just had to just chisel away. Amen. And in the chiseling, it still worked. Amen. To my good. Hallelujah. I think we need to lift our hands in his presence. I saw that look on some of our face. Amen. I, I feel as though I'm not alone. Hallelujah. But the good news is that even in the chipping away, God was not, God, our Heavenly Father, he didn't do anything to hurt us. Amen. He, everything that he did was to embedder us. Amen. It's one thing to put clothes on, to put a suit on, and, you know, and, 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 uh, um, and do all the things that we see uh, Christians uh, do, or uh, what they have modeled before us. It's, you know, anybody can put on costumes. Amen. Praise the Lord. But the Lord would, you know, the Lord, the spirit of the Lord was taking me on the costume. And he was bringing me into a place of the reality of his word. The reality of who he is. And that comes through by relationship. We get relationship through by revelation. Amen. Isn't that important? So that excites me. Amen. Uh, it's because our Heavenly Father have us at best interest. And so 1 Peter 2 and 9 says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Let's give the Lord another praise offering for that. <laughs> Look at someone and say, You are of the royal priesthood. Look at the other person and say, hello. hello. Yes. Yes. Yeah, this is for real, real. Amen. The royal priesthood. We need to get that. Have you ever just witnessed uh, people who have um, uh, what society um, um, uh, um, uh, has set as a, um, as a bar, if you will? Oh, that person come out of a good home. I, yes, they're, 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 I know their family, all of them are this and that, but a, a, 
a, ch uh, a kid or a child can come out of their home and act as though they have not come out of that type of uh, royalty, if you will. Amen. I'm not saying that to put anybody down. Come on now. Praise God. Uh, my grandfather was a pastor, and I knew how to respond uh, uh, in front of him. I know how to respond in front of my mother and my father. Amen. But when I wasn't in a present, man, I act like I didn't have that type of upbringing. <laughs> have you ever been there before? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, something was likening. Yeah. And the likening was I was not born again. Yeah. I have not been sanctified. My soul has not been sanctified. Yeah. Amen. And, 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 so, and so we learn, we learn that because we're a royal priesthood, amen, we don't have to compete uh, with anybody. Isn't that right? Uh, 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 the royal priesthood uh, do not operate in humanism. The royal priesthood do not operate in progressivism. The royal priesthood do not operate in uh, 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 socialism and the million-dollar club membership. Amen. We are royal priesthood, not by the clothes that we wear. Amen. But we are royal priesthood because now we have received a revelation of who God is or who Christ is in us, and we have learned how to just continually die and let God arise. Amen. My life is hid in Christ Jesus. Yes. Your life is hid in Christ Jesus. Yes. Amen. And I know the saying, Pastor, I tell you what, somebody get on the wrong side of me, you know. And I used to say this years ago, praise the Lord. I lay my religion down and I show them something. Well, praise the Lord. Thank God we're not seeking out the religion. But we're seeking out the relationship. Wow. Somebody say Wow. Praise God. So we don't have anything to prove to anybody. So now, uh, 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 let me touch a little bit something here. So when we, when we operate in the priest, uh, in the royal priesthood, king priest, uh, and how God have drawn us out of darkness into his marvelous light, uh, we understand the three dimensions the first entry level of discipleship and the second entry level of discipleship is steward. And then the third one is the royal priesthood. So there should be a progressive or there should be a growth that take place. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Uh, we should be growing in grace. We should be growing in the faith that we have in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We should be growing in our relationship. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Have you ever just been in a situation before? Have you just ever been, I'm, I'm talking to the married folks, amen. You've been married for a while, and it appears as though that, that your relationship between you and your mate is stuck. Yeah. Oh, well, the, the, we're dealing with real people. Right. Yes, it gets stuck, and, and, and it's stuck for a reason because somebody, amen, is not mature enough, amen, to seek the face of God. And when we seek the face of God, when we spend as much time with God, amen, like we do anything else, we will hear from heaven. We will hear from God, and the breath of God will breathe on us revelation. And the areas where we have been stuck, amen, the revelation of God that we have received from him, it will revitalize us. It will refreshen us. It will resuscitate us if necessary. Is that okay? Yes. Hallelujah. Let's get a Lord of praise offering for that. Oh, we busting up something in here today. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so, um, so now we go to the three dimensions of faith. Faith, trust, and knowing. We talked about that. Uh, the word of God tells us the first entry level of faith is faith itself. Uh, is it's a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Jesus is very distinct with people who he healed. He, some he says, your faith has made you whole. Now, our faith, and I like to look at it like this, if I can just simplify it. And many of us have used chairs. If you're not accustomed to a certain type of chair, and it may, it may, look, uh, it may look frail, feral, and so now you've got to 
examine that thing because you don't know whether or not that it's going to uh, be able to support you. So you have to have faith to sit in that chair. Now, once you sit in that chair and that chair is able to support you, that level of faith is solidified. Come on now. You go back to that same chair. Do you have to approach it like you did the first time? Why? Because something has already been established. That's first entry level of faith. Now, now, when you go to that chair, you can you you operate now in trust. Uh, Proverbs, the third chapter, and the fifth verse. When you find it, say Amen. It's on the screens. Let's read it together. Read it. Read. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not. Wow, trust in the Lord. So we're going from faith to trust, which trust is another dimension of faith. Somebody say trust, trust. is another dimension, another dimension of, faith. of faith. So when I go to that same chair, now I trust. Do that make sense? When we, when we enter into a relationship, it is by faith. After faith has been established and solidified, now we trust. Isn't that right? Praise God. I know we have already talked about this, so I'm just kind of perusing. Somebody say, go ahead and peruse, Pastor. Yeah, just go ahead and peruse. Praise God. I, I can share more on that. Now, uh, the, the, the third level of faith is knowing. Somebody say knowing. Let's go to uh, Philippians 3.10, and we're going to just share that first part. When you find it, say amen. amen. Philippians 3.10, note what it says. That I may know him and the power of his what? And the power of his resurrection. You know, I was meditating on that. Man, the power of his, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Look, when we come into that place of knowing when we come into that place of knowing, I thought about Dr. Sandra when God was speaking to Ezekiel in reference to the dry bones. Now, he, he was dialoguing with Ezekiel. He asked Ezekiel a question, and Ezekiel replied back, you know, Lord. He was smart, wasn't he? So, so, so watch this, watch this now. The emphasis is this. The bones was in a valley and they was dry. Watch this now. And to know him in the power of his resurrection. Come on now. This what, what I'm getting ready to say, king priest, royal priesthood, which is you, we operate in this level of authority. The Lord may turn your face to a valley of dry bones. What? You may say, Lord, my marriage is dry. Lord, my relationship on my job is dry. My, my, my father, my relationship with my family members appear to be dry. Lord, my bank account is dry. But watch this. To know him in the power of his resurrection. Come on now. If you get the revelation to that, you can speak the word. I get happy all by myself. Speak the word to those dry bones. Speak the word to that dry marriage. Speak the word to that dry well that don't have any water anymore. Come on now. Speak the word to your health. Speak the word to your mind. Speak the word to your relationship. Say, arise, O oh, Alonzo T. Gay. Hallelujah. It's only about 10 of you got, have, have received that revelation. Hallelujah. But to know him, the highest level of faith is to know. I know that I know. Hallelujah. The blind guy say, look, y'all can say whatever you want to say. All I know, I was blind, but now I see. 
You may have to catch the movie on that one. I know. I know who holds my future. I know who holds the keys. I know who loves me. I know who provides for me. I know that he's Jehovah Jireh. I know that he's my provider. I know that he's Jehovah Nisi. And he reigned in victory in my life. Come on and give the Lord a shout of praise. Yes! Hallelujah! Look at somebody and say, I know! Hallelujah! If I walk up to you, you know your name is Les, and I tell you that your name is Bill. And, uh, you say, no, my name is not. My name is not Bill. Uh, well, then, then what is your name? My name is Les. Yes. Then how you know? I know. I have the birth certificate, which is my guarantee. Yes. Amen. When we know in Christ Jesus, that is our guarantee. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Yes, yeah, I know, hey, 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 yeah, I know, I know, he's a healer, I know, he's a deliverer, I know, he's the love of my soul, he's water when I'm thirsty, shelter in a time of a storm. Hallelujah. I know. Come on, let's get the Lord a praise offering. And to know him. Jesus said to his disciples, who do men say that I am? Come on now. And the disciples said that, they said that you the prophet this and one thing to that and yada, yada, yada. And Jesus made it personal. And he, and he, and he said, who do you say that I am? Peter spoke out of Revelation and said, For thou art the Christ, the Son of a living God. Jesus replied to the Revelation. He said, Oh, flesh and blood did not reveal that unto you. Oh, I know, look, I know my father's voice. I know how he rolled with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Peter, 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 I know how, in other words, I know you, Peter, but revelation was given to you. Flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father, which is from heaven. And because of that, Peter, because of that revelation, I'm going to give you keys. Yeah, a steward you trust with keys. Isn't that right? <laughs> a steward have free range wherein other people won't, can't. A first level disciple, you can't give them keys as of yet. Certain things you can't trust them with. Amen. They still bickering. They still fighting. Paul said, are oh, you not carnal? Yeah. Isn't that right? Yeah. Praise God. There's no stability. Are oh, you not carnal? Yeah. Amen. You can't pay your bills like you. Oh, I shouldn't say that. Are <laughs> oh, you not? Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. <laughs> praise the Lord. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Praise God. How you intrigue people. Isn't that right? We represent the kingdom of God. Yeah. Isn't that right? Yeah. Now, let's move on. Somebody say move on, Pastor. Yeah. Now, the... The other three dimensions is, is uh, manifestation. Wow. Wow. And we see how the manifestation was being portrayed in the life of uh, Joseph. I share this with you. And uh, uh, the first dimension is, is, um, is 30 fold. Somebody say 30 fold. 30 fold. I consider that that is the entry level of the first entry level of disciples. 60 fold. Somebody say 60 fold. I consider 64 is the, uh, uh, the second level of, of steward. And the hundredfold, somebody say hundredfold, hundredfold, is a dimension of king priest. So 30-fold is disciple, entry level, first entry level. 60-fold is a dimension of stewards. And hundredfold is a dimension of king priest. Amen. I'm looking at king priest. Point at somebody and declare that. Come on, tell them, tell them. Prophesy that to them right now. Prophesy that to them right now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, prophesy that right now. 
Yeah, I don't care what your family have. I don't care what your family has spoken negative right. towards you, you king priest. I don't care what type of uh, 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 whispering that's going on in your job, you king priest. Amen. Amen. You king priest. Hallelujah. God declare it. And I share with you concerning about the story of Joseph. You know the story of Joseph. Joseph was sold by his own family. Mm -hmm. Some of us been sold. Yeah. Yeah. Can I keep it real? Yeah, we're talking to real people. Amen. He was sold by his, by his own kindreds. Some of us have been sold by our co-workers, our communities. People have marked you. They have tagged you and have named you this and named you that. I share with people all the time, look, don't judge me. You want to know why? Because if, if I fail in this area, that does not determine that's who I am. Isn't that right? Praise God. Hallelujah. So, but anyway, Joseph, <laughs> let me get reset. Joseph, uh, he was brought to Egypt. Now, he wasn't just a disciple. He wasn't on the first entry level of disciples. He operated more like a steward because when Potiphar, uh, when he was in Potiphar's house, Potiphar's recognized something about him, and Potiphar trusts him as a steward, if you will, and Potiphar did not have to look over his shoulder. Joseph made things happen, and he called Potiphar to exceed abundantly, amen, with his, even with his own riches. Isn't that right? Amen. He trusted him so much, and so you know the story that how that Potiphar's uh, wife, uh, she came against Joseph and yada, 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 and moving on, so Joseph... Uh, now uh, was, uh, was cast into prison, amen, and the keeper of the jail recognized something about Joseph. Praise God. And what I love about it, uh, Joseph did not let the environment affect his temperament and his relationship with God because every junction of his journey the Bible says, and the Lord was with him. So the Lord was with him in Potiphar's house, and the Lord was with him in prison. Two guys had a dream, and they were sad, and said, look, can I fix it up? What's wrong with you guys? Or why are you so sad? Look, I, I, everything I touch, I mean, you guys shouldn't be, shouldn't be uh, uh, sad because I'm overseeing you as into the jailer. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Well, we had a dream. Y'all know the story? And they both had a dream, and they shared a dream, and Joseph was able to prophesy and give the interpretation of their dream. Isn't that right? So now, Joseph, the answer that Joseph, or the interpretation of the dream, he got it from the father. He didn't pull out a dream book. <laughs> he didn't take shortcuts like maybe some may do today. But what he did, he heard from the Lord. And he shared revelation that the Father had spoken and he had given them the interpretation. So we know the story. They got out of jail. Isn't that right? And, uh, and they was promoted. One, one died and the other one lived. And that was the cupbearer. So what was taking place, Joseph said, Remember me when you get out of prison. I think the word of God say two or three years went by. Was it two years went by? Yeah, it went by. And now the king has a dream. No, <laughs> I can mess up right there. The king has a dream. And out of all the wise men that he have, not one of them was able to give the interpretation to the dream. No, not one. So the cupbearer, he's on the king's good side now. See, I know a man. I know somebody. 
We had a dream. He gave the interpretation of the dream and blah, 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 blah. And so the king says, send for him. So now God has set up a need in the king. Whoever you're working for, stop murmuring and complaining. Whoever you married to, go crank the car up. Stop murmuring and complaining. Whatever business you have, and if it's not doing well right now, stop complaining. God will put you in an uncomfortable situation so that he can get the glory and the honor out of it. This is where you, your talents can't get you out of your rut right now. Your smooth talking can't get you out of that rut right now. Your money can't get you out of that thing right now. You don't need Superman. You don't need Batman. You need a revelation. Yeah. Yeah, you need a revelation. Glory be to God. So, so, so God set up a need in the king. They said, go get him. And, and when, they, when they got him, before they brought him before the king, the word say, they changed his clothes. And they shaved him. See, we have to be careful how we come before the king. <laughs> Down here, Lord, waiting on you. Down here, Lord, waiting on you. Down here, Lord, waiting on you. I can't do nothing till you come. Watch this now. So now, he goes before the king. He did not cocky. You know, sometimes when people have a little money, people are people educated, are they intellectually strong? They can, they can have somewhat, not all of them, but sometimes, some, some can have that superiority about them. You wearing penny loafers and the other, and the other wearing Stacey Adams. <laughs> you know, have you just been in a company of people and they just look at you, they eyeball you from the top to the bottom? Man, what, what's wrong? They're trying to see... They're trying to see, are you wearing Dillard's or Walmart? <laughs> What's that have to do with, with the revelation that you might need right now? Yeah, I'm, I'm, let, let me get back focused. So anyway, hey, glory be to God. So what I love about Joseph, Joseph gave reverence to God. In other words, if there be any interpretation, it's going to come from God. It's going to come from the God that I serve. And he had given him the interpretation. Come on now. God set up a need, and the king needed what God had downloaded in Joseph. Joseph shared a revelation. After he shared a revelation, now God began to move upon the king. Well, what better person who we can set up to oversee this? Joseph himself, the one who God gave the revelation. Isn't that right? Praise God. So now we see uh, 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 Joseph being elevated from a steward to king priest. Yeah. Why? King priests have authority over seed. Yeah. 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 <laughs> king priests have authority over seed. Yeah. Glory be to God. Yeah. Now, before I go there, before I go there, I need to go back. I need to go back to something. I need you to go to Jeremiah. The, the, um, the fourth chapter. Hallelujah. Jeremiah, the fourth chapter and the third verse. When you find it, say amen. amen. Let's read it together. Read it, read. For thus said the Lord to the men of break up and so Let's read it again. Ready? Read. For thus said, Somebody say so. Come on and say so. Look, 
Uh, 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 I was getting ready to mess up, Nick. But, but you know what? This is off the books. God has given us all valuable seeds. Stop trying to sow seeds in something that you don't prove to yourself is not going to work. I don't know how many times, Dr. Sander, I have had people to come to us and say, I want you to be my spiritual father, a spiritual mother, or I want you to do this, I want you to do that, and one thing to the other, and then glory be to God. And this is not a bad thing. This is the, this is the predicament uh, that some of us in the body of Christ are located at. They are searching. They're still trying to fill that hole in their heart. Come on now. They're still trying to find the peace of the Lord. They're still trying to find the rest. And praise God. And when we hear from heaven and share it with them, and they're still sowing seeds. Come on now. And I'm not just talking just solely monetary gain. But they're still sowing seeds in, in the very thing that got them in the situation they're in now. They're yet looking for different results. And how many know if you keep looking for different results doing the same thing, there's something wrong there? Oh, man, we can get into inner healing and deliverance right now. Amen. Amen. What's far more valuable? I mean, what's far more valuable? Uh, look, I said this the other Sunday. If my marriage, if the strength of my marriage is based on my friends, then I really don't have anything. If the strength of my identity in Christ Jesus is based upon people who I hang around with, then I really don't have nothing. It's superficial. It's superficial, isn't that right? Now, now go to Hosea, Hosea 10, 12. Taking us a long time. If I were to say the book of Psalms, we would have found it just like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Amen. You ready? We got it. Ready? Read. Sow to yourself in righteousness. Reap. Break up, for it is time. Come on and get a Lord of praise offering. Somebody say king priest. king priest. Now, I see in Hosea the, the 10, 12, God has given them seeds. Amen. And these seeds are seeds of righteousness. He tell us to break up our foul ground. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. Glory be to God. And he tell us to seek him till he come and reign in righteousness. Every seed that the Lord has given you, the only way that it's going to grow, he have to release righteousness on it. Amen. Oh, yes, amen. Yeah. Let me show you something. Every when you receive revelation, somebody say revelation. revelation. When you receive revelation, that's a seed. And when you release that seed into this earth realm, it is God's responsibility to see that revelation manifest itself. He will reign righteousness. He will reign his kingdom on it. Why? Kingdom plus kingdom equal kingdom. The seed that you have is spiritual. God can take a monetary seed and turn it spiritual. If you respond obediently, amen, God can take you on yourself, amen, on your job, in your community, amen, in your marriage, or whatever the case may be, if you receive a revelation from the Lord, then our responsibility is to appropriate it and God will water it. God never told us to be a, a watchman over his seed. Just sow it. <laughs> Wasn't it Paul that said, uh, some sow it and some water, but who? God. But who? God. But who? God. Not intellect. God. But God gives the what? Increase. Wow. So if the increase is going to come, it's something spiritual, isn't that right? Yes. All right, now here we go. King priests have authority over seed, disciples, and stewards do not. They only get 30-fold and 60-fold, wherein the king priests get 100-fold, 1,000-fold exponential blessings. So now we have a bunch of people in the body of Christ trying to operate in a dimension they don't occupy in their faith. They are not getting the manifestation because 
they are trying to bind and lose from the first level entry of disciple. Pastor, that don't sound right. Well, if you don't understand the kingdom. Now, here we go. We understand We understand the first entry level of discipleship. We understand the second level, which is steward. And the third is king priest. We talked about the three levels of faith. Faith, trust, knowing. And we talked about, we just got through talking about uh, the three levels of manifestation. 30-fold, 60-fold, and 100. Now, as I prepare to close, I want you to get this. This is very important. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 12th chapter. First Corinthians, I mean 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter in the first verse. When you find it, say amen. amen. Let's read it together. Read it, read. It is not expedient... I will come to vision. Hold it right there. Let's read that last part again. I, ready to read, I will. You're going to get it. Let's do it again. Ready to read, I will. Second verse. I, about 14. That's what we want to abide. Sometimes we have to plow through the first level, which is the earth. I mean, I, I can work that too. Or sometimes we have to we have to plow through, amen, the outer courts and enter into the inner courts, and we have to plow through. The inner course to enter to that place called Holy of Holies. Come on now, are you with me? Sometimes we get stuck in that second dimension, which I call uh, the inner course. We, we praise the Lord, we have a great time, we do flips and somersaults, hope we land on our feet. We, 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 we tie my tie, tie my tie, eBay, eBay.com. We do all of that, we run around. That's all well and good, but if you're not getting results in what you're doing, you need to push and enter out of that inner court and press towards the place of Holy of Holies. That's where the chief priest went, and to the place of Holy of Holies. Why did he go there? To hear from God. He hear from God. After he left out of the place of Holy of Holies, he came back. And he was able to face the congregation all over again. Okay, how do that benefit me? In our prayer time, we pray. Sometimes we start out praying. A lot of stuff could be running across your bill. Or uh, you, I'm, uh, other words, uh, your mind, oh, I got to pay this bill. And you keep praying. Uh, yeah, I don't like the way they looked at me. You keep praying and you keep pressing your way until you enter in. Amen. Come on now, sometimes sleepiness try to come all over you. All of a sudden now you're sleeping, but prior to that, praise God, uh, you wasn't sleepy. If I was a devil, I would fight you too because I know if you press your way in or in, you're going to hear from God. He's going to give you keys. He's going to give you revelation that's able to bind and loose. Are you getting this? Hallelujah. So glory be to God. So now, so now, uh, uh, that, that king priest, you and I, somebody say you and I. You and I. We have the right, the word of God say, come boldly before the throne of grace that you may obtain what? Mercy in the time of need. Yes. Every last one of us have a right to come before the throne of grace. Yes. I'm going to say that again. Every last one of us has a right to come before the throne of grace. Yes. How often do we occupy the throne of grace? 
If you're going, if you're coming before God murmuring and complaining, you just, just forget it. Because before, before you're able to ask him anything, you must worship and praise him. And it goes without saying, you need to repent. Father, I repent. Glory be to God. Uh, hardly, I mean, you, you need to repent and, and, and just don't rush through it. See what the Holy Spirit will bring up out of your file. I'm telling you how to enter in. Glory be to the Lamb of God. And once you hear from God, you're able to use the keys. So now Paul talked about in the, in the first verse of 2 Corinthians 12, he said, I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. Who all want vision and revelation of the Lord? How many of you ever experienced visions and revelation from the Lord? Look, as born-again Christians, amen, that's, that's part of our inheritance. That's part of our nature. Come on now. When we was reborn again, it wasn't done in the natural things. It was done by the supernatural power of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we need to enter into that third heaven. He's, and the second verse says, such a one caught up into the third heaven. That's the place where king priests abide. We need to hear from heaven. Look at your neighbor and say, that's you. Watch this now. If there's a third, then there must be a second, a first and second. Third dimensions of access. So the third dimension is where the revelation is. Somebody say third dimension is where the revelation is. That's where God, king, priest, get information that is not available to other folks. If you wonder why things are not happening and you've been laboring over it for a while, God don't care how much you get upset. He don't care how much you cry. I mean, he do care, he care but he don't care. Amen. Until we get our attitude right. Now, I'm, I'm going to come over here. You, you guys are a little bit more lively. Until we get our attitude right. You can pout all you want to. What's that have to do with faith? Come on now. You can complain all you want to. I shared with Dr. Sandra here, um, the Spirit of the Lord had given me a revelation and told me to share with the people, and I, and I believe that it's for those who are watching too. He said, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit when the Lord has opened the door for you. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit through by complaining. That's what it is. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit by complaining when God has opened the door for you. I'm going to say that again. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit by complaining when God has opened a door for you. If you have, you need to repent. You can't be picking and choosing when God has opened the door. You need to what? Repent. A king priest get revelation from God, and he realized that one door will open up to another door. But murmuring and complaining is not a key. Amen. Okay, the third, <laughs> I felt that. Yeah, I felt that. Don't, don't, don't nobody move. Yeah, I felt that. Amen, 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 amen. Praise God. The third heaven is where the deep things of God. Isn't that right? First 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, beginning at verse 10. Notice what it said. But God has revealed them unto us. God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. So in the third dimension, you don't have to be an apostle. All you need is ap apostolic authority. I can go on and on and on, but I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to stop right there. And that bring us to this to our candidates. God has uh, singled you out. He have uh, sanctified you in his presence to set you aside to be part of the government of this house. We have elders, we have pastors, but now you, you're getting ready to be engrafted in as one of the elders. Amen. You have a power and authority in heaven and in earth. And praise God, it is not your responsibility to heal anybody. But when you are obedient to the word of God, it is God who will work in you through by the power of his Holy Spirit, and he will touch, heal, and deliver folk. With that all said and done, uh, we're going to uh, have Dr. Sandra to come.
And there might be some of you who are not sure right now where you stand. Am I a first entry level uh, disciple? Am I a second entry level of disciple? Or am I king priest? That's for you to determine. Praise the Lord. You know, as I shared, you know, we can shout and say we have a great time uh, uh, at church. But when we get home, we act like glory be to God. Where that gremlin come from? Look at your neighbor and say, don't fool yourself. <laughs> you was playing in church too. Yeah. But a real revelation touches that on the inside when we are open to the Lord. And he will bring forth healing and deliverance. Amen. People may not read the Bible, church, but they're going to read your life. You know the tree by the fruit it bear. Watch this. Watch this. When Jesus made reference to the fig tree, the fig tree... He saw, the, he saw the tree, and the tree had green leaves on it. Isn't that right? But it was barely. It didn't have any fruit. The leaves was for the tree, one interpretation said. The leaves was for the tree, but the fruit is for the people. The leaves is for your mate, but the fruit is for your mate. I mean, the leaves is for you, but the fruit is for your mate. The leaves is for you parents, but the fruit is for your children. Amen. The leaves is for you, but the fruit is for your co-workers. Come on now. Whatever level we find ourselves in, glory be to God. So we can look good with all these leaves shaking in the wind. All glory be to God. We can lift our hands. We holly, we, 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 I mean, we see all kind of stuff. We look good, smell good. But where's the fruit? Where's the fruit? God, our Father, Jesus, he's hungry for fruit. He's hungry for fruit. When we give him fruit, he also demands first fruit. Isn't that right? Fruits have what? Seeds. You give him that first fruit, and then he in turn will give you a second fruit. Because out of that first fruit, he gives you seed so it can continue to perpetuate and grow. If God can't trust us, watch it now. If God can't trust us in paying tithes and offering, if God can't trust us in our marriage, and you're looking for joy, you're looking for peace, tossing, I can't sleep, turning, feel so weak. Praise God. Yeah, uh, that was for those who, who was born way back in the day. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. In our relationships, as single people, even in your own place of worship. Yeah. Hallelujah. God is wanting what? Fruit. Yeah. He's hungry for fruit yeah. in our lives. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Let's lift our hands in his presence. Thank you. Hallelujah. We can just, just yes. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. He's wanting fruit. You may feel fruitless. You may feel barren right now. I'm here to tell you that the Spirit of the Lord is able to take you right where you're located at. Amen. To cause you to flourish and to multiply. He's able to resuscitate, to revitalize, to refresh and to renew. Well, you don't understand, Pastor. It seems like I've, I've gotten too far away from him. Now, look, you never can get too far from God because he's right there. He's just a step away in terms of all you have to do is just say, Lord, I repent of my sins. I repent for not allowing you to be Lord and Savior of my life. All you have to do is just cry to him. Too many times we cry for mundane things. I don't have enough this. I don't have enough that. And one thing to the other. But we should be crying out, God, I don't have enough of you. You're the only one that is able to make me complete so that I won't search after other gods. Hallelujah. 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 That thing that weighs in your mind all the time, I'm telling you, God is able to take that for an exchange for his righteousness. And to give you peace and to give you righteousness. 
Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Some of us, I sense right now, are a little bit brokenhearted because we feel as though that we have failed the test. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, you haven't failed the test. It's just been a time for you to just think yourself clear right now. You're thinking yourself through right now. The Lord has your attention right now. I pray that this message have stirred up something in you and not, and not get on Facebook and say, you know, the preacher said something I didn't like. No. You know what? Say something. Say something to yourself and say, Lord, it's something that the man of God shared. It touched me. It caused my heart to flutter. My heart got, got to beating fast. I start breathing a little heavy. Lord, you're touching something there. I might be a little ignorant, Lord, but Lord, open up my eyes that I may see. And Father, just as they had sent for Joseph, he shaved himself and they, and they cleaned him up and put new clothes. Lord, I bring myself before you. Not complaining, but it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. I need your grace and your mercy. I need the scales to fall off my eyes that I can behold your glory. Hallelujah. Oh, I sense it right now. I sense it right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Just real soft. Greetings and welcome to our Presbytery service. It is our prayer that you will be inspired, enlightened, and edifying as you bear witness of one of the most reverential experiences of your life. What you are about to witness is very reverent, extremely powerful, and awesome work of God. The candidates presented here today will be released into greater service and charged with the vocation of their respective office as elder. They are honorable servants fit for the master's use. They are being recognized as yielded vessels having served well and are now charged by the Lord to walk as God-fearing examples with great responsibilities for others to see and to follow. The, this man, man and woman of God have submitted themselves, humbled themselves, availed themselves, and have been proven to be a man and woman of character, integrity, and holiness. Each of them have demonstrated that they are faithful, supportive, prayerfully, and have embraced the vision of this ministry. Most importantly, each of them is striving to display a Christ-like character and is teachable and able to teach others. They have fulfilled the standards and have met the qualifications of the Holy Scriptures. We, therefore, wholeheartedly embrace them and encourage them to walk worthy of the calling by which they have been called. On behalf of Drs. Alonzo T. Sr. and Sandra R. Gay, Senior Pastors, and the Board of Elders of Acts Ministries, Inc., we invite you to take to be act, to be active participators and not just spectators. We challenge you to prayerfully join with us as witnesses and supporters of this awesome move of God. You may be compelled to cry, rejoice, or even move to surrender your life to Christ before the service ends. May the power of the Holy Spirit have his way. In this presbytery service, we will call the candidates forward and pray over each of them. We will then anoint them with oil and prophesy the word of the Lord over them. Our final work will be to present each of them before you as commissioned ministers of, the, of their respective office. With your presence here, you are also called to be a witness of the charge laid before them that at all times they must walk worthy of that calling before all men. Please join with us as we love them, embrace them, and esteem them for their work's sake. We give all honor, glory, and praise unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for your support and encouragement. Amen. Elders, all elders, mother.
Father, we anoint them in the name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We have uh, Brother Means, Les Means, who's going to be set in as an elder. And Sister Stewart, over to my left, is going to be set in as an elder. Pastor Catherine is up here with her husband. Amen. And we're getting ready to uh, pray and set them in. We're going to ask you, if you can and will, to kneel. intercessors be praying in the background my prophetess intercessors pray in the background it's the Holy Ghost Spirit of the Lord that would set them in that place and they will become a different person God told Moses they say I'm going to take part of your spirit and I'm going to put on those 70 men and they became a different person let us pray. Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to carry out your bidding. It is you, Lord God, that have moved upon our hearts and say, set aside these two candidates for the work of the ministry as elders. We thank you, Father, that they have proven that they understand kingdom order. They understand your heart. They understand your word. They meet the requirements, Lord God, of the standard of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord God, that they know what it is to suffer and to toil, but yet trust you. We thank you, Father God, Lord, for their fruitfulness that they have displayed, Father God, before man and you. And right now, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and by the power that is in his blood, we thank you that the Holy Spirit was supernatural to set them in that place of elders in the name of Jesus we magnify you and we glorify you, Father, for this miraculous work in the name of Jesus. Lord, that they will be able to prophesy. The gifts of the Holy Spirit will be stirred up in them, Lord God, for the work of the ministry. Not for their benefit, Father, but for the kingdom benefit. That whosoever will seek out the kingdom of God in their life, they can say, but surely for the kingdom of God is at hand to meet them at their point of need. Father, that you will use them and that you will break them like bread and pour them out like wine. For your honor, for your glory, you will give them revelation and visions, Lord God, that they be able to hear and see from the kingdom of heaven. And Father God, Lord, they be able to appropriate what heaven has sanctioned in the name of Jesus. You will use them in healing and deliverance. You will use them, Father God, to speak kind words, to turn away wrath. In the name of the Lord, Savior Jesus Christ, that their life has been set aside, Lord God, for the purpose of your kingdom. And we give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory in Christ Jesus' name. And man of God, this is what I hear by the Spirit of the Lord. I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, for truly I call you my Gideon. For you have been behind the wine press, and you have been faithful even behind the wine press. And that which you have found for your hands to do, you have been faithful to do it. But I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying even now that he's calling you out of obscurity. He's bringing you into the front forefront. I hear the Lord say he's beginning to cause a fire to stir up in you, and it's going to be like Jeremiah. The Lord says it's going to be like fire shut up in your bones. It's almost, I hear the Spirit of the Lord say, I'm turning you into another man, and I'm going to cause you to transcend above that which is familiar to you and cause you not only to come out of the natural, but to walk in the supernatural. For truly you have seen yourself in, in your mind, I, in those uh, walking in that place. And I say, man of God, I'm going to cause you that even not only are you having a promotion in the natural, but there's a promotion that's coming to you in the spirit. For you have, you have not 
resisted my Holy Spirit, but you've allowed the Spirit to take you down this path. And I'm saying, and I hear the Lord saying, I'm widening that path, that path for you, man of God. And I'm gonna cause you to stretch out. And I'm calling you even now to cause your stakes to go uh, deep and to cause your your uh, accord to strength to, to to stretch wide. For I'm calling you into a new place and a new realm. Yes, you have experienced some things naturally, but I'm but I hear the Lord saying, I'm calling you to go even more in the supernatural. And I'm and, and you would cause I will cause awakening into you by, uh, in your dreams. I will cause awakening to you that you will even have vision, says, says the Lord. For truly I have called you for such a time as this. I have called you two together and caused this to be a marriage here on earth, but a marriage that matched that was made in heaven. And you shall see in the days that come that I shall cause those things to come to pass. For I say to you, man of God, do not look at it in the natural, but I'm going to cause you to see it in the supernatural. You're going to see it by my spirit, and you're going you're gonna to experience my spirit in a different dimension. And that's what I hear by the Spirit of the Lord. For I hear the Spirit of the Lord say, Yea, I say unto you, my son, I have called you, and it was predetermined even before you entered into your mother's womb. And the Lord said that I've watched over you and I kept you. The Lord said that you're one that is not have been overlooked, but you have been one who has been acquainted with grief and sorrow, saith the Lord. And the Lord said that you have been touched with the very infirmities of what the enemy has thrown at you and what this world has provided. And the Lord said, because I kept you and I have provided, the Lord said, likewise, I will use you. You will recognize those who are in the thickens. You will recognize those who have been caught between a rock and a hard place. You will recognize those who appear to be weary, and yet you see the call that is vibrant in their life. And the Lord said, just as I have kept you, I will use you to speak a word of deliverance to them and let them know that I will keep them. The Lord said, you know what it is to twirl even when the sun was scorching hot, but you did not throw the towel in, said the Lord. And the Lord said, I have given you a solid foundation, a foundation that I will build upon. And the Lord said that as you begin to pour into the lives of my people, as you begin to aid and assist them at their point of need, the Lord said that you will minister out of experience with me and the, and the things that you have encountered here in this earth. But the Lord said that you have proven that I am the greater that is in you. The Lord said that you have become salt in light. And the Lord said, yea, I will use you in teaching. The Lord said, I will give you strategies in teaching. I will give you techniques in teaching. And the Lord said, of a surety, you shall prophesy. It will start with a thought. It will start with a word. And the Lord saying, truly and surely, I'm anointing you now. I'm anointing your hands for healing. And the Lord said, don't worry about trying to heal folks. It is me that's working in you and through you. And the Lord said, you just watch and see. He said, I'm going to spread you like a spreading oak and that you will provide shelter for many. The words that you will speak, the Lord said that they will bring forth calm and peace and rest to their souls. So the Lord said, you get ready for the Lord said, today, you stand as a new man. Today, fresh revelation. Today, you will see the word differently. Today, you will speak with a different voice, said the Lord. And the Lord said of a surety that I will use you and your wife who have called by your side. And I say unto both of you, the Lord said, fly as high as you can. Fly as high as you can. There is no limits and there is no boundaries. Fly as high as you can. For I have given you a sustainable faith. And I have given you a faith that will bring you to the place of knowing that you know that you know that in the power of my resurrection that it is a done deal. And this is the word of the Lord unto both of you. This is what I hear by the Spirit of the Lord. For the Lord says, truly, woman of God, I've called you as a woman and mother in Zion. For I've called you to be that example. 
for you know how it is to abound and to abase. You know how it is to plow through the rough spaces. Yes. And yet, even as you have plowed through the rough spaces, I have graced you. And I've caused you to be an example. And I've caused you to be a light that other women will ask you, how are you able That's to right. stand right. in the midst of the challenges, in the midst of the turmoil? And the wisdom that I have given you over the years, for has not been a naught. For there's no waste in my economy, and I will continue to give you revelation of my word and understanding of my word. And I even hear by the Spirit of the Lord that you're going to, that it, that He's going to begin to wake you up in the middle of the night. The Lord says, keep that pen and that pen, that pencil, that pencil and that paper handy, for He's going to begin you revelation. He's going to begin to give you keys. And the Lord said, I'm going to wake you up, woman of God, uh, uh, to pray. I'm going to put those upon your heart and cause you to pray. For I've called you to be an anchor in your family says the spirit of the Lord. Yes. I've called you the one to be that example to be that one that the, the, the family members can look up to and say, she has made it. She has been the one to plow the pathway. She has been the one that made the way and to light the way for my path. For my path. And the Lord says, you truly shall see a turnaround. You shall see a shifting take place in your family. And it'll because of your obedience, because of the times that you have spent with me, says the Lord, and you have allowed me to break you open as that alabaster box and to pour you out as you have poured yourself out before me. I've called my strength and I've caused that endurance and yes daughter for the prayers that have gone forth you shall see the breakthrough you shall see the answer to those that you have held on to the altar and that you have waited for my answer for truly as as I am promoting you today I'm yes. caused you to go into another dimension of my spirit yes. another dimension of intercession for truly you have a quietness but the Lord says that he has called you even in your quietness you carry a big stick in the spirit right. for you have clout in it with heaven and the Lord says I've given you the keys daughter and I've got, continue to train your hands to war and your fingers to fight for your family and for those that I'll bring across your path. For truly you have been one that's been seasoned. You have one of my generals, says the Spirit of the Lord, one that stands out high ranking in the Spirit because you have been obedient, you have surrendered, and you have humbled yourself before me. This is a time of exaltation. This is a time that I will yeah. cause you to experience the harvest and ex experience the increase. For even now, daughter, I am watering those dry places and cause you to know me in a different dimension. And that's what I hear by the Spirit of the Lord. For well, I hear the Spirit of the Lord say, Daughter, for you are my daughter, and I find no fault. The Lord said that you have went through a season where it was very crucial, that when you thought that life itself was coming to an end, and the Lord said that I moved in your heart and you cast the net one more time. The Lord said, you know what it is to have a choice, to live or die. But the Lord said, it was me that has sprung up within you, that well that will never run dry, said the Lord. And I hear the Lord says, he said, daughter, he said that I'm causing a fresh wind to blow on you like never before. The Lord said, I'm going to intensify my anointing. And the Lord said, literally, it's going to be almost like a shark wave that's running through your body. And the Lord said, no, for surety, that's the time that I'm speaking to you. And I will give you the understanding whether it is healing, whether it's deliverance, whether it's the prophetic word, or just bring a word of comfort. The Lord said, I'm going to use you to help corral and bring my people out of the storm, said the Lord. The Lord said, I have developed within you a voice of a mother, that common and soothing voice. The Lord said that you are one that's able to troubleshoot uh, the, the, the conversation of those who are in trouble. And the Lord said that you'll be able to point out the need, said the Lord. And the Lord said, I'm going to use you like a well. And out of this well will come forth the living waters. And those that would dare to drink of the fountain that will spring forth out of the words I will speak out of your mouth. They shall live and they shall prosper. And the Lord said that you, my daughter, you're going to be here for a long time. The Lord said, yes, you said this and you said that. And you thought about this and you thought about that. He said, oh, you're going to be here for a long time. Well, the Lord said, you understand nature and you understand my spirit. The Lord said that you're going to school some. And the Lord said that you'll be able to help some even with their health, said the Lord, because I've proven to you. And I've given you revelation. And he said, watch and see. 
And even in the revelation, in your night dreams and day dreams, I will give you the keys to the revelation. The Lord said, I have given you a great support team of those who have a revelational gift. The Lord said, as you continue to tap in it, there will be a greater impartation. And the Lord said, just as I've used them, I'm going to use you. And the Lord said, well done. He said, well done, my daughter. Well done. And we're getting ready to turn another chapter into your life. And great and powerful and mighty thing that would take place. place. For the Lord said, I consider you as one of the pillars in my kingdom. And this is the word of the Lord unto you. Come on, let's get the Lord Jesus Christ a praise offering. Jesus, I Everybody lift your voices now. Have your attention for our announcements, please. Want to remind you, of course, every Friday morning is our conference call prayer line, intercessory prayer line. You plug in at 5 a.m. If you're a member of Acts Ministries, you're welcome to be a part of it. Those of you that are members and would like to, to plug in for our conference call on Friday mornings at 5 a.m., please see one of our leaders. We'll be happy to give that information to you. We have choir rehearsals the second and fourth Wednesday of the month for the month of November is the 11th and the 25th. On the last Sunday of the month, we have our birthday and anniversary fellowship, and uh, that is for ev and everyone is always welcome to attend. We have a time to fellowship. Coming up next Sunday, the 22nd, is our couples fellowship lunch meeting. It, amen. We have an awesome menu. Our deaconess friend is ha is handling that. There is a sign-up sheet in the in the foyer. For those of you that are planning to attend, please make sure that you sign up so we um, will have enough food uh, for that time. And that's coming up this Sunday right after service. So uh, couples, you're all invited. We just need you to put your name on there. Uh, and guess what? Operation Christmas Child starts tomorrow. Yes. Can you believe that? I'm going to have Minister Pam come forward, but I just want to share. I had an assignment on Friday, and guess what we did? We packed Christmas boxes for Operation Christmas Child. We had 30 boxes. We had to find. So I'm already in practice. So as Minister Pam comes forth and share with us uh, what she needs for us to know for this coming week for Operation Christmas Child. Good morning. Um, uh, there's been a change of plans for the 21st and Saturday. I'm releasing all the men that are people that um, signed up to help um, 
load your trucks because we're going to do it on Monday, the 23rd. So if anyone is available to assist in loading the truck on the 23rd, we would appreciate it, your help. Um, 10.30. 10.30? Um, Monday morning, the 23rd. Also, if anyone would still like to get a box in order to um, fill one for Operation Christmas Child, we do have some available. And um, it is a worthy cause. And if you would like to come out and volunteer during that time at 10 a.m. Monday, tomorrow, you are welcome to come out and volunteer. Oh, yes. We have a 9 o'clock meeting Monday morning for training. So if you can come out, please do. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Pan, for spearheading that. So we're excited about that. And we also have coming up on uh, the 6th of December, we have our pre-Christmas dinner and gift exchange. And if I, if I can get someone to get my basket up here real quick. Uh, thank you. And what we're going to do is uh, after service, I'm going to ask maybe Sister Bobby Jean, if she'll hold this at the back. Those members of Acts Ministries, your names are in the basket. If you're not a member of Acts Ministry and you want to participate, I need you to put your name in the basket, okay? This is $5, $5 only, just a little gift exchange, a little token of our, our, our love that we want to show uh, for this time that we have our gift exchange. I'm going to ask Sister Bobby Jean if she'll get this now, and she'll have it. Just get your, And I'm going to ask you, if you pick your own name, please put it back. If you pick a family member's name, please put it back, if you would, please. All right, okay, and we are having dinner that day, so uh, keep in mind we have a sign-up sheet. I think uh, uh, Elder Pam is, uh, is uh, orchestrating that. Did you have an announcement regarding that, Elder Pam? As uh, Pastor Sandra already indicated, we do have a sign-up sheet out there already. Um, and I do have the menu, and the menu consists of turkeys, which the men are going to do the meat. So thank God for the men. Um, and baked chicken, um, dressing, mac and cheese, green beans, collard greens, and potato salad, and toss salad. The desserts is um, sweet potato casserole and cakes and drinks is sweet and on sweet tea and water. And the condiments, you know, plates and stuff. Um, I already have some people already volunteered for some stuff. So I'm going to have the menu out there and... Um, let me just go ahead and say who already volunteered so I won't have to worry. No, don't do it. Okay. All right. Sorry. <laughs> well, some people already have volunteered for some stuff. So, yeah, just see me after service if you want to look at my list and then let me know what you would like to contribute. And we put thank you in advance for your participation. And we're... We want to also remind you, coming up on the, the 12th of December, we have been asked to do a inner healing and deliverance seminar in Jacksonville, Florida. There is a sign-up sheet out there. Once again, the apostolic team, in order to be a part of it, we need you to have gone through our full seminar. And also, we need you to sign up, uh, indicate whether you would need to ride the van or not, because we will secure a van for that day if necessary. And that is on a Saturday. Uh, we we uh, will not have service on Wednesday, December the 30th. However, we will have watch night service on the, uh, Thursday, December the 31st from 9 p.m. until 12 a.m. There will be foot washing and finger food served at the uh, end of, of that time. Uh, uh, coming up on January the 16th, we have a full deliverance seminar. For those who have never been through our seminar, we would uh, invite you to, to uh, sign up, uh, especially our members. If you would uh, sign up, we only have uh, seven slots available, and we, we can't take any more than that at a time, so you get quality ministry. There is a sign-up sheet out there. There's also one for ministers, too. Same qualifications. You have to have gone through the full seminar in order to help minister. The 23rd of January, we have a women's meeting from 10 to 12, and the 20th of, D of February, new members class. So those are upcoming announcements. Dr. J., do you have any further announcements? just like to say that um, they have uh, completed our phone app, if you will, and um, if you haven't um, had a chance to go on it yet, uh, they have updated. Uh, they have a couple of things that they just need to change, but other than that, it's up and running. My understanding that you'll be able to uh, download an icon on your phone uh, once you log in uh, uh, or put the web, put the uh, uh, 
mobile address in there. So if we can put that up, well, we probably don't have time to do it. I, I know that uh, it can be switched over somewhere on there. But anyway, but it's uh, www.actsmeninc, A-C-T-S-M-I-N-I-N-C dot com forward slash mobile forward slash. And, uh, and so uh, we, we just thank God for Brother Rainey. Uh, and his team for doing such an excellent job. So um, please, once you get it, uh, text it, email it to other people to let them know that we're alive here on uh, here at 3150 Bamboo Road. Also, uh, we do archive uh, the services or, and or the messages on YouTube, so they can also follow us on YouTube. And all the ar- uh, um, all the icons are there, <laughs> amen, so that they can uh, uh, determine which one they want to watch. Amen? Amen. Uh, is that it? Yes. Amen. Um, to all our guests again, please, we would love for you to come during that time. E, E, E. If you, and even if you don't bring a gift, you, we want you to come and just fellowship. Amen? Amen. We would love to have you and uh, 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 have you. And, uh, and it's always good to see the Mitchells. Yes. Amen. Yes. All the way from Avon Park, but they always check in on us from time to time. And we just want to say from this house, we love you all so very much. We really, 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 really do. Yes, yes. yes. Faithful, faithful people. Indeed they are. All right. If that's all, we're going to stand and be dismissed. Good to see you, Rev. Amen. (laughs) Praise God. Everybody, we're going to stand and be dismissed. All right. Let us lift our hands before the Lord. Father, uh, as we uh, get ready to close, I speak to that shortness of breath, and I speak correction. I speak it to come into divine alignment. I declare the victory of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ over it. In Christ Jesus' name, thank you. Father, even that person that's been having a little issue with their kidneys, Father, I speak correction to it. That would heaven has saints, Lord, we release it now in Christ Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Lord, that person who's been having trouble with uh, their digestive system, Lord God, especially uh, in the lower part of their stomach, Lord, we speak that the good bacteria will begin to arise and do what they have been given to do. Father, we thank you that the Holy Ghost will arrest. issue in that stomach and bring forth wholeness in Christ Jesus name now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant make you perfect in every good work to do his will working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever and everybody said amen god bless you